As was told in the last Portuguese history video, there was a civil war between the two sons of Don Juan VI, one being a liberal and another an absolutist. The death of Don Juan VI in 1826 created a dispute about the royal succession. The heir should have been the eldest son, Dom Pedro, however, because of a sequence of events that led to the independence of Brazil on the 7th of September of 1822, he lost all the rights to the Portuguese throne. Due to this, the rightful heir had now become his other son, Dom Miguel, who had been exiled after he led two defenses against the liberal revolts of 1820, which implemented a constitutional monarchy in Portugal. So the regency was trusted to Isabel Maria de Braganza, the fourth daughter of Don Juan VI, who, disregarding any succession laws, named Dom Pedro, which at the time was Emperor of Brazil, as the successor to the throne. And in 1826, he claimed the title as Dom Pedro IV of Portugal. However, the Brazilian constitution of 1824 forbade it. So, again, ignoring the succession laws, about one month later, he abdicated to his daughter, Dona Maria, who was at the time seven years old. In April of 1826, Dom Pedro reviewed the Portuguese constitution of 1822, allowed his brother to return to Portugal and himself returned to Brazil, leaving behind his daughter with his siblings, Dom Miguel and Isabel Maria de Braganza, that would serve as her regents until she became old enough to reign and marry her uncle, Dom Miguel. In the constitutional monarchy, there were basically two factions, the Liberals and the Absolutists. And when Dom Pedro IV made all the changes mentioned before, the Absolutists were unsatisfied with them and continued to consider Dom Miguel the rightful successor to the throne, basing their claim on the fact that contrary to his brother that decided to make an ex-colony independent and now ruled over it and declared war against Portugal, Dom Miguel actually returned to Portugal and fought for it. In February of 1828, Dom Miguel came to Portugal and swore the constitution to be able to be regent. However, he was immediately named king by the general populace and his close followers pressured him to reign like the old kings did, using the courts. In May of the same year, he invoked the traditional courts with the nobility, the clergy and the free men to proclaim his power. And in the 23rd of June, after the court made the necessary preparations, it declared Dom Miguel, now the first, as the rightful king of Portugal making clear how legitimate Dom Miguel was and how illegitimate Dom Pedro was. This act was based on the Cortes del Amigo, which ruled at the time and named that Dom Pedro and his descendants would lose all claims to the Portuguese throne if at any time Dom Pedro became ruler of any other country or if he ever revolted against Portugal, both of which conditions he broke. With these series of events, Dom Miguel annulled the liberal constitution and was crowned Dom Miguel I. In the beginning, the absolutists looked like the inevitable winners and the liberals looked like a lost cause. Dom Miguel tried to get international recognition for his government, but only the US and the Vatican recognized it. All the other European monarchies stayed silent on the issue. Portugal at the time was living a hellish financial crisis due to the various conflicts both internal and external, the fall apart of the Portuguese Empire, the Peninsular War and the growing loss of trade routes to foreigners. Emperor Don Pedro I, unsatisfied with his position and unable to solve both the Brazilian and Portuguese problems at the same time, in 7th of April of 1831 was forced to abdicate the Brazilian throne to his son, Emperor Don Pedro II of Brazil. After the abdication, he traveled to Portugal in order to defend his daughter's claim to the Portuguese throne and to restore the constitutional monarchy abolished by his brother. In the same year, Pedro landed his troops in the Azores and took control of Many Island, making this archipelago his base of operations. He managed to capture the strong military and naval positions of Angra, now known as Angra do Heroismo, as well as their soldiers and fleet, from where and with such Dom Pedro would later use to invade mainland Portugal. In the 8th of July of 1832, Dom Pedro and his army landed in the Thieves Beach, later renamed the Memories Beach in Vila do Conde. This event became known as the Landing at Mindelo, where now stands a monument to all the casualties of the Civil War. 
After the hard-fought and successful landing, the liberals marched to Oporto, where they entrenched themselves inside the walls of the city as the absolutist troops began the long and harsh siege of Oporto. After a while, a small liberal fleet managed to breach the naval blockade of the siege and rapidly sailed to the Algarve, where it landed a division of the liberal army. This division rapidly marched towards Lisbon to capture it, which they did without any resistance due to all the absolutist soldiers being in the siege of Oporto. Due to the capture of Lisbon in August of 1833, the siege of Oporto officially ended. After this event, the war continued with forced marches through Coimbra, Leiria and Ribatejo, where Dom Miguel established his court in the city of Santarém. In the 22nd of April of 1834, the Treaty of London was signed and two days later the Quadruple Alliance was created, composed of France, Spain, the United Kingdom and Portugal and agreed on a military intervention against Dom Miguel I. As the British Admiral Charles Napier landed his Portuguese troops in Figueira da Foz, advancing through Leiria and Torres Novas, the Spanish General José Ramón Rodríguez Campillo entered Portugal through the eastern border of the Beira and Alta Lentejo with a 15,000 men strong expedition. This led to the decisive Battle of Aceiceira, where an around 7,000 men strong liberal army defeated a 6,000 men strong absolutist one, with minor casualties on its side and leaving the absolutists with 2,900 casualties and injuries and 1,400 men captured by the liberals, with the rest of the army fleeing to the Alentejo. This meant peace, and a peace treaty was signed on the 26th of May in the concession of Evremont, where it was determined that Dona Maria shall return from exile in London where she had stayed with her cousin, Queen Victoria, and the former King Dom Miguel I should be exiled to Germany, restoring the constitutional monarchy that only ended in 1910. After the war ended, Dom Pedro had a low life expectancy since he contracted tuberculosis during the war and, as such, needed to hurry the coronation of his daughter, Dona Maria II of Portugal, swearing once more the constitution and officially ending the regency of Dom Pedro IV, that ended up known as a hero for liberating Portugal from his brother. However, his brother never fully abdicated from the Portuguese throne, and after landing in Genoa, he protested a document against the Quadruple Alliance and that the concession of Evremont had little to no value. That would be called the Protest and Declaration of Genoa. Many of his descendants followed his steps and, even to this day, one of the most legitimate heirs to the throne of Portugal, Duarte Pio de Bragança, is his great grandson. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tale of brotherly rivalry, and if you want to see more content like this one. See you next time!